Hi guys, it is an absolutely <clears throat> flat out miserable hot summer day here in the drought plagued wasteland of South Austin, Texas. We have made it to Tuesday, I believe, <coughs> I believe it's July 9th, 2013, but my little, my computer, my crutch that I usually bring up here is I'm busy downloading about 10,000 songs onto my iTunes so I do not have my little crutch so what I'm gonna do for the six or seven people on this planet who care to stick around I'm gonna sit here and just ramble fairly incoherently I'll just call this rant something like another day in the life of a doomsday prophet and actually I guess another another two evenings in the life of a doomsday prophet where I'm just gonna tell you about two recent evenings I sat last night and Saturday night do I want to start last let, let's just start with last night and go backwards uh, I was at amazingly enough imagine this guys I was at a picking party last night uh, in East Austin Texas and there I was with about well, I guess there were about 15 of us and as I usually am in these picking parties, I was in a group of, as I say, I think about 15 all, I would describe loosely this group as a liberal, probably, if you had to prescribe a, a political party, most likely Democrat. I can't imagine there were any Republicans there, educated middle class to upper middle class white uh, baby boomers probably everyone in the in the room would have considered themselves environmentalists and by the definition of what constitutes an environmentalist uh, today they probably would be considered by society environmentalists. So anyway, what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that this is a group of people who are, are certainly have the same information available to them uh, that I have, okay, to reach my own uh, conclusions about the state of the planet. And so uh, what... What happened last night is what, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, is happening more and more often where Humpty Dumpty tribe, where this side of me, which is actually the more real side of me than the side that I present to my, to my friends, uh, showed up uh, where these videos that I do here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe were actually a small topic of discussion. So one guy, uh, my, my buddy Jody, was his comment, he goes, well, Hamma and I, he, he goes, I finally stumbled across that YouTube channel of yours. And, and I kind of laughed and, and I said, oh, really? And, and I said, how long did you survive on Humpty Dumpty Tribe? And he goes, he goes, I made it about 30 seconds, Hambone. That was, uh, that was his response. And then uh, a, another fellow who was uh, kind of listening in on the conversation, my buddy Rain. I, I've mentioned Rain before and making the comment, uh, what was his comment that, that I mentioned before, that he is stupid and happy, that he brags about being stupid and happy. And so he, his comment about, well, Humpty Dumpty tribe in particular, but, but about doomsday prophets environmental alarmist and the chroniclers of the downfall of global industrial civilization in general was that when he encounters this uh, in his life that he he has no interest in hearing it he prefers to be stupid and happy his comment to me last night about people like me 
people like me, uh, was that he, he just doesn't care to hear it. Uh, what was his comment? And this is, I, I believe, a direct quote from an intelligent, college-educated, uh, as I say, progressive, liberal, white guy, baby boomer. Uh, he, he just tunes it out. And as he said, a little bit of self-delusion goes a long way. So that is how he handles it, that he is stupid and happy and self-delusional by choice, even though he realizes that uh, his, his willful ignorance his willful ignorance, and there's no other term for it, to open up to what is going on on this planet is self-delusion. It's how he buffers himself. And, and you better believe, as I responded to him, well, and, and as, you, as you can see in your own life, Rain, how a little bit of self-delusion goes a long way, uh, imagine when you take this self-delusion on a planet-wide level, where 99% of this planet are in this uh, self-delusion. Uh, wh where that takes this planet. It takes this planet where it is today, on the brink of, of collapse, not on the brink, uh, in the middle of an ongoing collapse, but he didn't, he didn't want to hear any of this. He, he had no desire to, to hear any of this from me about the, the self-delusion of the planet. And uh, now another woman there who has heard maybe she might have heard in her life 12 of my rants, and, and, and I'm probably deluding myself with that. She is one of these, one, one of these uh, Alex Jones Kool-Aid drinkers, and she was talking about trying to get me to watch one of these, one of these videos, these fear-mongering New World Order depopulation agendas which I actually made it 12 minutes into. It was a 36 minute video. And, and, and I was just saying, darling, you know, when I see that word depopulation, uh, I just shut down that it, that it is this uh, Alex Jones fear mongering horse shit about the New World Order's depopulation agenda. My God, how many rants have I had about it? And she goes, well, Hambone, what you do on YouTube is fear-mongering. You know, that uh, how can I sit here and call out Alex Jones on his fear-mongering when what I do myself is fear-mongering? My response to her and, and anybody else leveling the charge to me that I am as guilty as Alex Jones of fear-mongering. I, and I, I said, darling, I said the difference between Humpty Dumpty Tribe and the Alex Jones YouTube channel is that my fear-mongering uh, is, is reality-based in, in science, in hard science, particularly the science of ecology and climatology, it is based on science. It is based on actually fairly simple math. If you want to study my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Professor Al Bartlett, that it's not that, 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 that a lot of these conclusions that I'm drawing about the planet are fairly simple mathematical uh, computations. It's math, science, and the historical record that the, that, that the conclusions that I reach in the, particularly in the deep end of the doomsday prophecy pool are based on science, simple math, and the historical record. Anybody who wants to look 
at the same information that I spend hours and hours a day studying will will reach the same fear-mongering conclusions and that 80% of what Alex Jones his fear-mongering is based on on his uh, his fantasies now there is the 20% of Alex Jones fear-mongering which is dead center on target but I, but I don't want to get too far off but anyway that that, that was last night uh, but I actually want to talk about uh, this picking party I was at on Saturday night in the town of Pflugerville, Texas, which is just north of, uh, of Austin. Uh, it's one of these bedroom communities of Austin, one of these hell holes. And I've had another rant about uh, in this same house. <clears throat> So this friend of mine going up there to Pflugerville, Texas, to to go to a picking party with some good friends of mine. When we got there, I, I was saying to my friend, I, I said, you know, Pflugerville, Texas, it is the epicenter. It is the epicenter of everything that is wrong in this country and on this planet. It is one of these suburbs from hell. It is, if you're familiar with James Howard Kunstler's view of these suburbs, uh, Pflugerville, Texas is the poster child that James Howard Kunstler would point out as a poster child example of what is wrong in this country and on this planet. So we're going there to this house, which I've talked about before in other rants, where my friends, it's this beautiful three bedroom, two bath home, this little tract home on one of these postage stamp size lots. Uh, well, you know, where my friends, uh, you know, there's, they have two cars and a motorcycle and the big flat screen TV. And they also have, as you walk out the back door to their little postage stamp size lot up against the backyard of the postage size stamp lot to the house behind them, uh, is this, is this bumper sticker, quit your bitchin' and start a revolution. Well, I found the, at least the female half of this house, who I, who I love dearly, again, again, I, uh, this couple owning this house in ground zero of everything that is wrong in, in America are, uh, are upper middle class, educated, uh, baby boomer white folks. Who, who are clued in enough to have a bumper sticker uh, that says, quit your bitchin' and start a revolution. And uh, so I found my friend Susie outside. She was, to her credit, she was not sitting in the air conditioning in front of the, uh, in front of the flat screen TV where Susie was, the, the hostess. She was outside, it was, it was right about dusk. And what she was doing out there, guys, she, she was waiting for her new little $40 made in China solar lights to come on. She had bought two of these, they were $40 a piece. So she had spent $80 on these two little things. And, and, and what they were, uh, they, they were these little glass globes. Okay, these little solar lamp glass globes, and inside each of the globe there was a little LED light that changed colors. I think it went from green to red to blue. There might have been a yellow in there. Green, red, blue. So every couple of seconds, the little, I don't know whether it was one bulb changing colors or whether there were four bulbs inside that changed the colors and she had put these little uh, the, these 
these little uh, solar lights in, in the corner of her little privacy fence to give her some privacy between her and her next door neighbor. And so at dark, uh, after the sunset, these little lights came on. So she was out there waiting for her little made in China solar lights to come on. And uh, she was out there with another dear friend of mine, Peggy. And so Susie and Peggy were out there waiting for the uh, made in China LED solar lights to come on. Uh, which they did, guys, and and and, 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 I, and I will, I, I'm not going to deny this on any level. They are cool. That's why Susie bought them. It, it, they are damn cool. <coughs> uh, so anyway, we were out there enjoying that, and then Peggy announces to me that uh, com completely, I had not, I had never even realized that her house in Austin for sale, she was saying that she had just moved to Pflugerville. That she had sold her little house, which was probably built in the 1950s. You know, just your basic little 1950s tract home uh, in, in Austin. I'm sure she made a pile of money on it. And she had moved to Pflugerville. And, and I don't know why I was taken aback by this. <laughs> and I said, oh, really? I, I said, I didn't even have any idea you were looking in Pflugerville. She goes, oh, yeah, Hamba. And she goes, I moved here about three weeks ago. And I, I said, well, well, what do you think of, of life in Pflugerville? And I... Uh, plane go by. She, she goes, hey, Emma, and she goes, I absolutely love it. This was a great move in her life to move to Pflugerville. She goes, I, I, I love it. She goes, I have everything I need. Everything I need. And uh, guys, you, you know, you can, you can imagine when I am being delivered this line. And, and, and I said, well, Peggy, d define everything you need. And she goes, well, she goes, hey, on. she goes one half mile, one half mile from my house. She goes, it's all there. She goes, and I, and I think I'm remembering these four right. I honestly think I'm remembering these four right. She goes, one half mile from my house. She goes, we've got a Dairy Queen a Popeye's chicken, a McDonald's, and a, what was the fourth, and a Subway. There you go. She has everything she needs. One half mile from her house. Now, I doubt she's ever walked to, uh, or taken a bicycle this half mile. Uh, because pretty much everything in Pflugerville, Texas, everything is is 100% dependent on cars, like, like so many other suburbs. So uh, Peggy was absolutely thrilled that uh, that she had uh, everything that she needed and unfortunately I wanted to go go on with this conversation but we were interrupted by by my other friend uh, who I was just talking about uh, my Alex Jones Kool-Aid drinking friend accusing me of being a fear monger she's also the one who's accused me of that the only reason I do this is for my ego the only reason that, that's why I come onto this rock so the, 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 this woman who I absolutely do, love dearly, guys, and uh, she is, quote, she is not one of the people, when I talk about my clueless friends, uh, she is not one, she, she is one of the people who is awake uh, on, on, on one level, on the Alex Jones fear-mongering level. So anyway, she arrives on the scene, and then we, and so she interrupted the discussion about everything you need and she spies these 
two little made in China plastic things changing colors and she goes wow she goes those are really cool uh, I think that was that was a, uh, a, a a direct quote so our attention was gone back into the uh, started up this conversation about how cool those were and that actually hearkened me back to uh, I, I just never had a place in a rant to mention this to a recent conversation I had with this woman in her own yard it was during the last full moon uh, so we were in, in 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 yet another house this one in South Austin Texas not far from her so we're sitting there you got a picture guys the full moon was up but it was hidden behind her house so where we were sitting we couldn't see the full moon. We, we would have had to move our seats about 30 feet. And so anyway, she has her own version of these little multicolored lights. She doesn't have the big $40 globe ones. Hers are a much smaller version, maybe the size of an apple. Her little, uh, and, and make no, and, and make no mistake about it, they are damn cool. I am in no way denying that these little, that these little made in China plastic LED lights are not cool. So she and I are sitting there, and uh, I don't even know what we were talking about. Probably some, some of her Alex Jones fear mongering, and uh, it's right at twilight. Well, guys, horrors of horrors. One of her little. One of her little uh, little solar lights doesn't come on. It is it is malfunctioning. Imagine that some made in China plastic thing that she probably paid eight or nine dollars for worked for about a week, but before it starts malfunctioning, so she gets up uh, and 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 goes. Uh, and, and brings the thing back to where we're sitting and she's like oh like what is going on with this thing and and she's taking it apart and I'm sitting there stoned uh, on the porch just, just going Jesus Christ I mean just just seeing her getting all frustrated with this thing that that she never needed to bring into her life and, and she was like dropping hints that she wanted me to help her figure out what was wrong with her little with her little made in china thing and I, and I said darling I, I i i said i'm just so done with all this in my life not uh, of course not including the made in china plastic camera filming this and the made in china plastic computer that is downloading all of these songs on the iTunes while I'm sitting on this rock. Uh, we, we won't talk about those, but I told her, I said, I am so done with this shit, with these little solar lights and, and all of this other stuff. And, uh, it, and she's still got the thing in her hand and just she just gives me this look and you got to understand that this woman has seven grandchildren three children and grand and seven grandchildren and while she has this half taken apart little solar light from china she just levels this look at me and she she goes hambone we're just staying busy until the planet collapses I'm pretty sure this is a direct quote from someone who gets it with seven grandchildren looking at me and saying, uh, you know, just like my buddy last night, saying a little self-delusion goes a long way, telling me, you know, ham bone, we're just staying busy until the planet collapses. I'm pretty sure that's a direct quote. And I said, yep, darling, you hit the nail on the head. We are just staying busy till the planet collapses. 
which was my cue to get on my gas sucking uh, bicycle, come back here so I could get high and, uh, and watch the full moon rise. Uh, the biggest solar lighting show on Earth. It's worked fine for about the past 200,000 years uh, as the solar light show, but I guess the full moon has been eclipsed by the little LED lights. So uh, all of my environmentalist friends with their quit your bitchin' start a revolution bumper stickers don't have to mess with watching the full moon from the backyard, their backyard in Pflugerville, Texas. Now guys, somehow this was just rambling rant uh, was going to be a segue into uh, somehow that I was going to connect the dots between this and, and some sort of segue into, uh, in, 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 into not so much suicide, but the whole concept of, of suicide capital punishment and sterilization and the question of uh, is it would you be better off never being born but uh, I understand uh, that there's there's probably one or two people on this planet uh, listening to me now and my brain is frying and I need to make sure that my iTunes downloading is proceeding along so I will have to save the rant would it be better uh, not only for this planet but for yourself had you never been born but I will save that rant for another day because I gotta close up this little made in China plastic uh, camera so I can go check on my made in China plastic computer. Bye guys.